folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today I'm going to be walking you through the different camera sensor sizes on your uh, thermal devices and kind of just generally touch on what you're going to see and what the numbers are going to mean to you. You know, try to, try to help you out on uh, making an informed decision on which one that you might choose and why. So let's jump over here to the board real quick. What I'm going to show you here is currently these are going to be two really common sensor sizes. And so what you're going to see is, like in the case of 64480, you're going to have about 307,200 um, what they're going to call sin cell, or they're, they're the little uh, sensors on the front end of the camera sensor itself. So as the light waves are coming through there, what's actually measuring what's coming through the lens. And so like in the case of the 32240, you can see where that number is going to be significantly less. So what they typically do is as you go down in, into your uh, lower end sensor, like with less sense cell, they'll go up in magnification of the lens. So what they're trying to do is hit a sweet spot there where you get the best resolution on your picture across the magnification range while still being able to use the sensor to its maximum ability you know, inside of the, the purpose of the device. So in other words, like in the case of the scope, you're going to see those magnifications go up in that, you know, three, four, five range. In the case of a, you know, like, I'll just show you, like this is Pulsar's Thermion, so like this is an XM38, going to be 4X, you know, at, at the bottom end of the magnification. So what they're trying to do is hit, you know, a really good image at a useful magnification inside of that sim uh, inside of that sim sensor's capability so as you go as you go up in sensor size and I don't want to confuse you as in physical sensor size because we'll get into that here in a minute it's just sensor count as you go up in that your resolution so your your image information is going up so the amount of information coming in is going up so you're able to produce a better more resolute Im image what you will typically see is then they will start taking the magnification down in the thing and the reason they're doing that is because they're able to go higher in the magnification range and still maintain a good image because they're digitally zooming on the the image so if you think of it in terms of one of those old dot matrix printers I don't know if you can see these dots but you know if you have one made up of, of, a, of a lot more dots like in the case of this the 307,200 dots versus the 76.8 the larger those dots get as you walk in on those or in, as that camera zooms in on those, then you can see where you're going to start to see them or you're going to become pixelated in your background image a lot more on a smaller sensor. So that's why they're stepping up on magnification and down here and you say, well, why wouldn't they just hold the magnification higher? Because in most hunting situations, field of view is very critical. So what they're trying to do in like the XP models, in the case of this, you know, the XM being the 32240, you're going to have that higher magnification, but a little bit, you know, a, a much smaller uh, sensor uh, size. In the XP, you have a lot more information coming in. You're going to use a lower magnification lens. It's going to give you a lot more field of view coupled with the ability to zoom into that image and not get as much pixelization. So, you know, once you get to the same magnification ranges, they'll start to become very similar. It's just that you can go, you're, you're going to gain versatility every time in the larger sensor because you can go lower in the magnification setting if they're allowing you to do so. Why that's important to me in the Pulsar products is coupled with the PIP or the little picture in a picture inset that they have, which it basically allows you to have high magnification sitting there in the top center of your screen with its own reticle and then the, a nice big you know wide field of view screen all overlaid together right there with its own reticle so I'm just an eye twitch away from high magnification or wide field of view so it makes you know it makes the XP device even that more versatile although I'm not really bashing on the XM if the XM's base field of view and magnification meet your needs then in some instances you can save quite a bit of money uh, you know versus going to the XP just know that in almost every case the XP is going to give you a bit more versatility in my opinion uh, you know across its power range the next thing I want to touch on in combination of that are the output display so you're going to see these magnification numbers jump around a bit so as as the output displays get larger 
So now if I'm sitting there and I'm looking inside of this view piece and the display screen looks like it's this big in there to my eye versus if it looks like it's this big in there to my eye, you'll start to see some magnification changes that are not necessarily indicative of field of view. So whenever you're looking at field of view on these, you want to look at degrees field of view and you also want to look at the magnification numbers because what you'll find is in the case of the new Thermion, they're running a, a really nice big 1024 by 768 screen, whereas in the older version uh, trail that this basically is replacing, it was a 64480 screen. So you're going to see some magnification increase in these that physically just has to do with the screen being larger to your eye. So, you know, I would equate that to standing 10 foot away. You know, if you're a fixed 10 foot away from, a, uh, say, a 60 inch television, versus a 40 inch television, you can see where you're going to be able to see things a little bigger on the 60, but you really, you know, the, the input coming into that screen didn't change, so, so therefore your field of view didn't change. So, you know, be a little cautious that the magnification number changing does not always equate to a field of view. Um, that gets a little confusing on some of the devices, but you know, again, that's what I'm here for. If you ever have any questions, just give me a call. I'd be more than happy to go over your scenarios and try to talk to you about what would work best, in my opinion. Um, the last thing I want to key on just real quick is the, is the sense cell size or the micron of the sensor. So basically what you're going to get into there is, is let's erase this and I'll just try to real quick explain this to you. So if you go from a 12 micron to let's say a 17, uh, so a 12 micron is going to be about, I think, I think on the numbers on this, they're about 16 and a half millimeters square. And then if you jump up to the older 17, they're going to be about 24. So you in the terms of night vision and the way we think of absorption, you would think that bigger is better, but what's actually going on here is in the case of a 12 micron, and that's the, so what they're measuring there is the distance between the actual center of the sim cell, which is measuring the wave coming in. As you go down in micron pitch on your sensor, your physical sensor size gets smaller. It does two things for you. It allows you to run a, a smaller lens with higher magnification closer to the sensor because now as you know the way light comes through a lens you, you get this converging point and then it, and then it X's and starts to come up so the, the longer that this needs to be back to the sensor to match this then the farther away I have to put it so you know without getting way into the technicals of that because I'm most certainly not the guy that's qualified to explain this you know just know this is it allows them to produce uh, smaller lighter sleeker devices by going down in this pixel pitch because the sensor size itself is getting smaller which is therefore you know passing off to the lens itself being able to get smaller so you know and the, another thing and this is my opinion is you're going to see detection rates go up on some of these i think that's a combination of both the screen getting physically larger so you're able to pick things up on that because now you're looking at a little bit bigger screen. But I also think there might be some truth to the fact that as you go down in SenCell, uh, that pixel pitch on the SenCell, you get a more accurate uh, measurement of the wave. So like in the case of this, you know, currently on the Thermion where you're running a 12 micron in the 32240 and in the 64480 still running the 17, you can see like one thing I wanted to show you here, this, is an XP38, you know, so you can see the in bell size difference between the two units. So basically, what I think is going on there is they have to physically make this a little larger, you know, so that, that I don't know if it's the diameter or the length that, that has to change in order to, to make that, you know, maximum point on the sensor, that maximum field match the sensor's input. You know, so it's, it's evidently forcing them to go to a little bit larger uh, lens here. But one thing that I will tell you, even if that's at more accurately measuring the wave and you get slightly better detect. So in other words, if that wave coming in is coming in and it's represented like that. So now in this smaller sensor where I've got smaller deviation points, 
to measure the wave versus say for example the 17 being bigger like this so now you can see how I can more accurately measure that wave as it hits that sensor so obviously you can see where I might get more accurate information even though I have less of it which is going to push my DTEX up on a device like this just know that you still have less incoming information so you have less bits and pieces to put together so your XP you know, at this point in time, it's just hands down, it's going to have a clearer, more resolute image, even though at this point it may have slightly less detect, you know, given the same size in a 12 micron, just, just know that it's, you know, don't let it fool you, you're still not going to get a more resolute image out of a smaller sensor, even though it may look like the detection numbers are slightly better. But, you know, if, if don't let that confuse you, it's just, you know, what I said in the beginning is what really uh, maintains the 64480s are typically going to give you higher versatility, but that's going to come at a cost. And that's really and honestly, that plus knowing kind of what you're comfortable with field of view and magnification range is what's important. Other than that, you know, by quality, that's why I personally like the Pulsar stuff. I think they do an extremely good job of maximizing, you know, their lenses to their sensor relationships. Their images tell the tale, their, their images don't have a lot of noise in them, so that's telling the tale to me that they do very good on their algorithm and their processing capabilities for the output. You know, there, there's a lot more of the intertwine of that than just the raw components that a guy just doesn't realize that, that it, it takes all of that combined to get a really good clear image. I think that they do an outstanding job and that they, you know, they, as a general rule, they they have a really good high integrity of hitting than what the hunting guy needs. So, you know, again, same holds true, and this is the Axion product. The reason I had them kind of sitting here is just to give you an idea. I mean, it kind of tells the tale on as the, you know, as we get to 12 micron and the sensor sizes physically start to get smaller, how you can start to have devices that you just before were not even imaginable that you could get a you know a device that's small enough to fit in your shirt pocket that is capable of you know in excess of 2,000 yard detect ranges it, you know it's, it's starting to get a little bit crazy in that respect so you know very very high quality devices that Pulsar is putting out right now if you have any questions on them at all or if I can help you in any way shape or form Give me a call toll free 877-806-2977 or check us out on the web www.foxoptic.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.